What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Leah Matthews and Julie Mitchell. How y'all doing today, ladies? Hey, Hi. good to see you. Hi. Y'all ready for, for Chief Chat? I am. I'm ready. So ready. So I'm excited, man, because we get to talk football today. And so, you know, I love me some football and uh, we get, get the pleasure of talking football with the NFL great uh, that I got a chance to cheer for, that, but only for one year because uh, he only played a year with my Cowboys. So <laughs> <laughs> without further ado, Julie, please introduce today's guest. I totally know that football is your jam, Chief. So we are excited to welcome today's guest. He spent eight seasons as a wide receiver for the Green Bay Packers, one year with your Dallas Cowboys, and is now with the Houston Texans. In his 10 years in the NFL, he's compiled nearly 7,000 yards and scored 47 touchdowns. He's here today thanks to our friends at Gillette. Please join me in a big Chief Chat welcome for Randall Cobb. Hey. Randall, woo! How you doing? How y'all doing, man? Thank you so much for having me. I'm, I'm so excited to be a part of this and be able to sit down with you all and have a little conversation. Excellent, Randall. Thanks so much. And for everybody watching, you know what to do. Let us know in the comments where you're watching from. Share your love with Randall there and leave some questions too. We'll uh, read those throughout the broadcast. Now is a great time to start your watch party to enjoy this live interview with your friends. And if you're not following our page, well, why not? Chief Chats are every week and we have great guests lined up for military exclusive interviews for you this spring. Awesome. Awesome. So Randall, man, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. Just came from uh, the facility, actually uh, doing a little rehab on my on my toe. I had a little toe injury this past year. Uh, missed a few games at the end of the season, so I'm just getting back into it and, and, and trying to get healthy and ready to go for the next season. Absolutely. So, can you tell us where you where you calling in from? Yeah, I'm calling in from Houston, Texas, H Town. H Town. Okay. And yeah, we were talking before the live started, man. You got a little. It got a little cold down in down Houston. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely did, man. And, you know, my heart goes out to all the families that, uh, you know, had to deal with this. Uh, having two young kids myself, it, it was definitely a tough situation. So I can't imagine some of the families, what they were going through. Uh, I hope everyone is okay and safe now. Uh, it's crazy, man. It was 70 degrees today. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's I, I had a T-shirt on. I've been up here in Dallas, and we had a T-shirt on yesterday. I'm like... This time last week, man, it was a blizzard. It was right. It was a natural disaster. Like, what's going on? Right. But welcome to Texas. That's that's how. I- <laughs> <laughs> Even the weather big in Texas. Yeah, absolutely. So, Randall, you're obviously best known for your incredible accomplishments on the field. Do you have a favorite moment from your career that you can share with us? A favorite moment uh, for me, I would probably say it was my first game, my rookie year. Uh, it was coming out of the lockout. I um, was a rookie uh, coming out of the lockout. It was the first game of the season. We were playing the New Orleans Saints. This is when I was with the Packers. And, um, you know, a rookie, I'm not expecting to play too much, not really expecting to make any kind of impact. But uh, I had two touchdowns that game. Uh, I ran the wrong route, and Aaron still threw it to me, and I scored my first <laughs> NFL touchdown. And then later in the game, I had a kickoff return that at the time tied the NFL record for the longest kickoff return at 108. Uh, so it, it, it was definitely a coming out party that, uh, that I wasn't expecting to have, but you know, it was, it was definitely a blessing. And I think it definitely jump-started my career. I oh, mean, I'm sure it's good to have a GOAT as a quarterback, uh, one of the GOATs as, as a quarterback tossing that ball. We, and we had the pleasure of uh, having uh, Aaron Rodgers on our chief chat before. So that was, that's awesome. I love it. Yeah, yeah it was great. Aaron, Aaron's a great guy. He's one of my, one of my closest friends. You know, he was, he was, he stood in my wedding. Uh, he, he's a brother to me. Uh, you know, I, I, our friendship goes way beyond the football field. And that's one of the special things about football. Uh, you know, you, you, you have people from all different backgrounds that come together and are able to uh, chase the same goal. And we all put in so much work and, and put so much effort into what we do and to building our craft and being the best that we can be personally and then coming together as a team to put it all, all together on the field. Yeah, that, and, and there's so many parallels in sports and in the military as well. The military, same function. You bring all these people from all different walks of life and we're, we're all trying to get to a, the same mission, the same goal and uh, just learning, learning to love one another. So that's, that's, that's a cool 
cool interaction with other people. So. Absolutely. Thanks for sharing that. And Randall, as a professional athlete, injuries are inevitable. Um, you mentioned earlier your season ending injury this past season. So can you share with us, how do you handle adversity and how do you still support your team and contribute even when you can't be on the field? Uh, well, adversity is part of life. Uh, no matter what goes on in your life, you're going to face adversity at some point. We all do. We all go through it. it it's different from person to person, but you, you really have to take it down to a day at a time. You know, you can't really think too far in advance. You can't think about um, what's happened in the past. You can't sulk on, um, you know, all, all the things that you faced. You have to take everything on a day at a time and, and really stay present, uh, stay mentally focused on what you're trying to accomplish for that one day. And, you know, you continue to stack one days on top of each other and, and you'll build something in your, in your progress. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's kind of the mindset that I take to it uh, throughout my career uh, with different injuries that I've had. Um, you know, it, you definitely have the range of emotions that you go through, um, you know, from being mad to sad, to, to happy, to crying, to laughing. And you, you need those. You got to experience all those, mm -hmm. all those feelings and, and, and continue to, to push forward to know what you are trying to accomplish and who you're trying to be. So uh, that, that's kind of my mindset that I take uh, with, with attacking every day and, and trying to be the best version of myself. That's awesome. So uh, we, we talked about the, 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 the freezer that we were in last week, right? And, and on top of that, we still got COVID over here. Like, hey, I'm still here. Like, what, what's up? <laughs> so, so um, so how, how do you even handle in uh, the, the COVID challenge with training and rehabbing and, and being at home with uh, two young children? It, it, it was really tough and it, it still is really tough. You know, I, I haven't really had the opportunity to see my family as much as I would love. You know, as far as my immediate family, obviously my wife and kids were here. Uh, my, my mom and dad, I, I've seen them probably, I think it's been what, once in the past year. My sister and brother, I have a niece that I still haven't had a chance to meet yet. Um, oh. back in Tennessee. Uh, so it, it, it's, it's made it really difficult to, to spend the time with your family like you you would like. Uh, but when it comes to training, uh, I, I'm fortunate enough, I have uh, some, some gym equipment here at the house. When the pandemic first started, we were living in California at the time and we had a gym at the house. So I was able to you know take the workouts that I have uh, in the off season um, that, that I get from my, my trainer um, and do them at the house on my own. Uh, so, so I was fortunate enough to have that space uh, to be able to go out to some to fields and, and, and run. Found a park that nearby. I think it was closed, but you know, I was trying to, trying to, get, <laughs> to get some of my run again. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, it, it definitely has made things very difficult. Uh, but but it's something you know we got to take serious. You know, the, the faster that we can overcome this and hopefully we can get herd immunity and, and get back to some normalcy at some point. Uh, but it honestly has been a blessing just to be able to spend so much more time with my kids, be, be home a little bit more than I would, especially like during the season. You know, a day for me during the season, I could go in at 6 a.m. and not get home until 5, 5 or 6 p.m. So uh, being able to get home a little bit early and spend a little bit more time with my kids, definitely going to look back and years to come and, and be thankful for these moments. And, and how old are your kids? My oldest is two and a half and my youngest just turned one in January. So. Okay. So, Real so, you, so, so you, didn't, you didn't have the school age kids where you had to be the teacher. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> no. That would have went over. <laughs> so I know you, I know you hoping everything get back to normal before they get, get in school. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Sure. Parent, teacher, and principal all in one is not a good place it's, to it's, be. It's not a good look. I promise you. I would have been a good gym teacher. I would have been able to have about it. <laughs> uh, fast that, I don't know. So you touched on this a little bit about fitness and, you know, as you know, our nation's heroes, they're focused on staying fit to fight. And obviously you're an elite athlete. So staying in fantastic shape, it's all part of the job for you. So can you talk to us a little bit about what you're doing workout wise? And then do you have tips for people who can't get to the gym? I guess go walk in a closed park. Shh, we don't tell anybody. Um, do you have any? <laughs> For sure. I, I think, uh, you know, obviously fitness is huge for what I do, but it's also a lifestyle. It's also a mindset. 
It's, it's something that if you want to do it, you'll find a way to do it. You'll find things around the house. You'll find an area. You don't need much room to do push-ups. You don't need much room to do sit-ups. You don't need much room to do air squats or grab some, something to give you some kind of weight. It, it's all about having a mindset to, to being able to, to do what you need to get done. And, uh, you know, I, I think as far as fitness goes, um, I, I can't even, I know that there's some parallels with, with military and football, but it, it's different. It's different whenever it's, it's your livelihood, it's, it, it's your life that you're, you're trying to um, protect and also our lives as, as citizens in this country. You're, you're, you all have so much respect for, uh, and for, for what you do and, and um, you know, putting your life on the line for, for our freedom. And Randall, eating well plays a huge role in athletic performance too. Um, the exchange promotes a BeFit lifestyle with better for you meal and snack options in our stores and our convenience stores. So can you share what's your approach to nutrition? Do you keep to a strict diet or do you have a nutritional philosophy uh, when it comes to healthy eating and staying well? I do. I do. Um, I, I wouldn't say it's as strict as some, but it's definitely a lot more strict than a lot of people in, in uh, the football world that I know. Uh, you really have to have some kind of baseline. Um, you, you, I, for me, I'm big on fruit and vegetables. Uh, that, that's a big part of my intake. I make sure I get my protein. I have my protein shakes. I have, you know, meat with just about every meal. Uh, one thing I've been able to do here recently, I got a blood test done and was able to see that I'm allergic to dairy. So that's one thing that I've cut out of my life, oh, wow. which was hard because I was <laughs> <love milkshakes. laughs> did, did, did you have a reaction or something or? No, I, you know, I, I just, I've been, I've been drinking milk my entire life. I've been eating cheese. I've been, I've never really paid attention to it, but it was something that came back that, you know, through the blood work that I had done, I found out I'm allergic and I need to cut out of my diet. And, you know, it's, it's, it's been difficult, but you know, uh, it, it's, it's definitely something I think I feel a lot better. Uh, I don't know if it's just my mind playing tricks on me, but I definitely, <laughs> definitely feel better. Uh, I, I don't have as many stomach aches and stomach issues. And uh, you know, my, my gas has been subdued. So my wife loves that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's, that's mm-hmm. awesome. So do you have a, a cheat meal? What's your, what's your cheat meal? Oh man, I told you milkshakes, milkshakes were a thing for me. So now, now I try, I try to stay away from them as best I can, but uh, man, you, you make a good batch of Rice crispy treats for me. It's going to be hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Throw some M&Ms in there. You know, oh yeah. Know. Oh yeah. That's- you got you got to freak you got to freak it a little bit. Not the store bought, not the store bought. I need the I need the homemade. The homemade, yeah. Yeah, on the stove. Yeah, I remember that commercial where the, the the mom went in there and threw flour on her face, and she came out like with all these rice crispy treats. But maybe I'm just showing my age. I, I don't know if y'all seen it. <laughs> no, I remember that one too. <laughs> I remember it. You're not alone. So uh, so Randall, we got a captive audience, man. We got soldiers, airmen, guardians, marines, sailors, coast guard members. Uh, and military families watching. So what what kind of words of inspiration or thanks do you have for all our heroes out there? Uh, first and f- foremost, just just thank you. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for um, giving your life to us uh, as citizens of this country. Um, our thanks goes far, far and wide. I mean, just, you know, I, I, I see people all the time and they tell me like, you know, what you do is, is so amazing. And, you know, I'm um, so thankful for Sundays the, to be able to watch you all play and stuff like that. But, you know, we, we can't take it for granted uh, the, the impact that you all make. And it, it goes a lot of times without being seen. Uh, and and it's, uh, it, it's, it's, I'm very thankful for that. I'm very thankful for what uh, all the military does for us and uh, the, the life that they're able to provide us with. Thank, you, Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for that. That means a lot to our viewers who are watching. And speaking of folks who are watching, I wanted to turn to the live feed for a second and read you some of the comments that folks are leaving. So Sonia Holland says, Thank you for supporting our military. 
And Sam Cotton says he's watching from West Virginia. Um, somebody else is watching. Wayne is watching from Cabot, Arkansas. Robin says, good afternoon. Happy to catch Chief Chat today. Thanks, Randall, for your support. Chris Ward from Dallas says, Cowboys should have traded Zeke and kept Randall. He was great in his time here. Oh, man. And I then... <laughs> <laughs> And let's see, Bill Hamilton says, hey, y'all, Hambo here from Mobile, Alabama, retired U.S. Army guy here. He says he loves shopping the exchange. So thanks, Bill, for your support, and thanks for joining us today. Um, Leah, did I miss anything, or do you see anything on? Um, I saw somebody was tuning in from Osan, uh, so that's an overseas in viewer in there. Korea. Yep. And then Kat Clark on Chief's page, Kat Clark says, we miss you in Green Bay. Uh, miss y'all too. Green Bay always be family. I'll be a Packer forever. <laughs> and Annette Cortez is asking if you were affected by the winter storm. I was, I was. We were out without power for about 36 hours. Um, we were able to go to a friend's who had a generator. And while we were at our friend's house who had a generator, their water burst their pipes burst, so then we were out water. So we're like, okay, well, we got one house that has water and no heat, and we got one house with heat and no water. So <laughs> just luckily we're in the same neighborhood. We were able to back the house back and forth between the two until uh, until uh, the, the power came back on, so. And then you were able to get on the community and, and help um, Houstonians uh, weather the storm as well, which is really fantastic that you were able to, to help out. Yeah, you know what, being a part of this community, I, I think that, you know, when things happen around us, it's, it's our, our job, it's our responsibility as, as uh, neighbors to help each other and, and be of support in any way that we can. Um, you know, obviously with COVID going on and everything, it makes it that much more difficult. Uh, so, you know, obviously, and I'll, I have two sons at home as well. So me and my wife, we were trying to figure out ways that we could help. You know, obviously we didn't want to leave our kids at the time. So we made some donations to the Houston Food Bank. We made uh, donations to Baby to Baby, a for, uh, foundation here in Houston to help with uh, childcare and uh, su su supplying um, uh, supplies for um, babies and infants and toddlers. So. Um, we tried to do everything we could to help. We, we uh, gave some uh, dinners to um, the first responders um, from uh, Raising Cane. So we, we tried to do what we could with, uh, with our opportunity and uh, be able to help out any way we could. Yeah, man, it's, it's, it's so refreshing because uh, I think um, a lot of times we highlight the negative so much uh, in, in, in media or social media or, or that's the the, the easiest thing to get click and likes or clicks on is, is negative stuff. But man, we just, it just shows there's some good people in the world, man. And, and, mm -hmm. and, and when we make, when we're able to, to help other people, I think that there's no better feeling to me personally uh, than, than, mm -hmm. than helping somebody get, or, or helping somebody get back on their feet or just helping somebody in general. So uh, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. For sure, for sure. Entertainment, the only thing that sells is negativity. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's always great to, to hear some good stories and, and get some good news uh, when we can. One more quick question, Randall. Um, Jawan, he's our viewer from, from Korea. He says, can you take us through your game day routine? And then also, who was the person that you've hit the hardest? <laughs> All right. uh, let's, let's yeah, who who got ran over? Who who the Randall truck truck stick? <laughs> uh, let's see. I would say the the hardest hit I ever had was probably again my rookie year. I, I didn't get to play too all, too much. Uh, you know, I was probably playing like 10, 15 offensive snaps a game, uh, and a lot of time it was blocking. So I took my job serious, and I remember I was coming. I, I went into a game, it was a run play coming my way and I had to block a safety. So I saw the safety creeping down and I know I had to block him. So I took the angle and he never did see me. So I like blind side. Oh. <laughs> and this was before this was before some of the new rules. It probably would have been a legal hit. 
back then on a different <laughs> player. But mm-hmm. yeah, I, I hit him pretty. I smacked him pretty good. Yeah. It was and, against the Lions. I can't remember exactly who it was. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure he remembers you, though. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my, my game day routine, um, you know, depending on what time the game is, a lot of times we got to be at the stadium about three or four hours before game day. And, you know, you wake up in the morning, you get you a good breakfast in, uh, head over to the stadium, uh, and you just go through your go through your process. And, you know, I try to, you know, we're, we're creatures of habit. So I try to stick with the same process every game, uh, pregame, go through my own warm-up before we, we uh, throw with Deshaun. And then we go back in for a little bit, and I have playlists that I listen to. Before I go out, calm before the storm. You know, I've got my Lauren Hill, my Erica Badu on that. <laughs> got that neo soul, that neo soul popping yeah, off. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I gotta stay calm. And then as we get closer to game day, you know, I gotta start ramping it up. You know, I get some of my meat meal, Lil Wayne out. <laughs> uh, so, so it, it it changes throughout the the course of the the, the thing. And then right before I go out, I, I gotta play my Batman music to make me think I'm a superhero. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's great that's good stuff so what's ahead for you during the off season and where can fans go to keep up with you and what's going on with randall cobb uh so fans can keep up with me through uh, my twitter archive at archive 18 on instagram at archive 18 uh that's more i'm most active uh for me, this off season uh, is really about healing up and, and getting back to moving with, with my foot. You know, I've, I've made a lot of progress. I've started running a few weeks ago. Uh, now I'm starting to get into some cutting and it's just about building those calluses back up with my feet and, and getting the muscle memory back and uh, building confidence in myself and building confidence in my foot, knowing that it's okay and I don't have to worry about it. So that's the process for me. Um, you know, I'm, I'm hoping to get vaccinated at some point and uh, be able to see my family and spend some time back in Tennessee. Um, you know, but most importantly for me, it's just about being my being my boys. You know, I, I, I made a comment to one of my friends not too long ago. I'm, I'm sorry I've been such a bad friend. I've just been focused on raising my kids. So, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm just trying to be the best dad I can be and, and provide them with uh, a life and, and, and create memories with them uh, as they get older that we can look back on. Yeah, it, it, I, we got friends that that we can pick up. We cannot talk for six months to a year. You can pick right back up like it, exactly. it never it never start stop. So that's exactly. awesome. And uh, so we, we know we know you got uh, other engagements. So we're gonna uh, wrap up the interview. But we, I just want to say thank you for uh, spending time with us today. Uh, just know that it means a lot to our military community. Uh, a for your support because you you uh, obviously uh, support what we do. And we, we support what you do. And, and just to get to know you for the, the past, you know, 23 minutes, man, you, you're you a good dude, man. I get, I get good vibes, good energy mm-hmm. from you, man. So uh, thank you for, for being just a good human being, man. And big thanks to Gillette for making this happen. Uh, we wish you all the best for this season. Uh, we're praying for you on this injury so we can you can get over that and get back on the field. Uh, and even though you don't play for the Cowboys, man, you got you got another fan. You got, you got another person <laughs> riding with you, man. So I uh, pretty happy. <laughs> I appreciate you all again for having me. Uh, you know, I, I thank you. I thank you for your service. I thank you for your time. Uh, and, and God bless. God speed. Awesome. Awesome. All right, man. Well, have a good one. And uh, Chief Chat out. Chief Chat out. <laughs>